all everyone, we get to talk about the Mac Studio and see how this Mac holds up about a year later in 2023. Now I will definitely tell you a device like the Mac Studio is still completely worth it. I mean this is a very very good Mac. It doesn't really get too much better than this one if I'm being honest. Up until you know Apple releases the next Mac Pro, you're still going to be getting a very fast performing you know Mac from something like the Mac Studio. In my opinion, I think this is the best Mac you can buy as of right now. It's probably one of the most powerful ones, and unless you're trying to go for like a MacBook Pro, there's not really too many competitions in this specific, you know, area with something like the Mac Studio. Now it's not cheap, it's still pretty expensive for the most part, and for the majority of people out there, you probably don't need this much power. But we're going to go ahead and break down exactly who this Mac is for, and how it's been holding up, and any complaints people have really had since the last year. Now if you want to buy this Mac Studio, or maybe any other Mac, I will leave some links in the description. You can get those Macs from there, and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the outside of the Mac Studio, we have a beautiful design. Some of us probably noticed this by now, but it pretty much looks Looks like two Mac Minis stacked on top of each other, and I do think that was actually something that was really nice. I think when you're buying something like the Mac Studio, you're getting a very, very well-built Mac for the most part. It definitely can't, it definitely can get better. Like when you look at the Mac Pro, I love that design a lot more. Maybe even you know, it's more premium. But the Mac Studio, I mean, for it, you know, for what it is, I think it's pretty nice. Now on the front of this Mac, you do actually get two USB-C ports. So this is something that is really nice. So if you wanted to, you can go ahead and quickly plug things in. You can go ahead and plug in a, you know, ex, you know, SSD. You can plug in an accessory. You can plug in a microphone to record videos. You can do anything you want to with those USB-C ports. And that in and of itself is really nice. Having them accessible right there on your specific desktop right in front of you is really cool. I personally have been in a lot of situations where my Mac, you know, I have to like kind of swing around and like turn my MacBook Pro around or if I'm using, when I was using my Mac Mini or even my iMac, I have to like swing behind the thing to plug it and it can get kind of annoying. With the Mac Studio, you don't have to do that. You can just literally just plug that thing in on the front and that is it. It has a lot of heft to it too, so even if you're plugging something in, depending on how hard you're pushing it in, it's probably not gonna move the Mac Studio around, which is actually a nice touch, but you're also getting an SD card slot on the front of this Mac Studio. Now, seeing the 2021-2022 evolution of Apple and seeing them bring back this SD card was amazing. That was one of the biggest reasons why I did not upgrade from my older Macs at all, and then when they actually ended up bringing it back, it was something I couldn't even refuse, and they probably knew that. A lot of people were gonna switch over to their Mac at least their newer ones, if they were to bring the SD card slot back, and this was no exception. From the you know reviews and everything that I've seen even since the Mac Studio's release, tons and tons of people are still happy about it, and they're also happy about the MacBook Pro bringing the SD card slot back, and it's been about two years since that Mac's been out, and a lot of people are still very happy with that, including myself. So on the front, that kind of covers it up. On the top, you just get that Apple logo. There's no other ports on the sides, except until we make our way over to the back of our Macs. Now, the Mac Studio comes in two different models. It comes in an M1 Max model, and it comes in an M1 Ultra model. So the thing to keep in mind here is that with the M1 Max and M1 Ultra, you are getting a, you're getting different types of ports on both. So keep that in mind. So on something like the M1 Max Mac Studio, you are getting four Thunderbolt 4 ports. So this is the specific model that I bought. It was the cheaper end one. But if you get the M1 Ultra one, which is more expensive, you are getting six Thunderbolt 4 ports. So keep that in mind. You are getting additional ports right there on the actual, you know, M1 Max one, at least ports that have more, you know, Thunderbolt 4 accessories, you know, if you want to connect more monitors and things like that. Well, you can do more of that on the M1 Ultra, but I do think for a majority of people, you are going to be perfectly fine with something like the M1 Max. I think it's, you know, those four Thunderbolt 4 ports. Unless you're doing something wild, then you probably don't even need those many ports, to be honest. You're also getting two USB-A ports on both the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra, but if you're getting the M1 Max, you're getting two USB-C ports, you know, on the front as well. You're getting an HDMI port, you're getting an Ethernet port as well on the back, and like we mentioned, you are getting that SD card slot on the front as well, which is amazing. So from the I.O. of this specific Mac, you are getting an amazing amount of port selections just like that on the specific Mac. So that is still something that's really cool. I still prefer having more ports, 
But even if you were to get that M1 Max model, which is the cheaper one, which is still like two grand starting off, you can still, you know, plug in a dongle and you can expand your slots that way too. So you have still a little bit of leeway in that specific perspective too. So it's not just like you have to get the M1 Ultra. It's like you can still expand it the other way too. Now that kind of covers it up from the outside. Now internally, there are some things. Again, the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra is clearly going to be some differences. You can get up to 20 core CPU on the Mac Studio, up to 64 cores GPU, up to 128 gigabytes of RAM and up to 8 terabytes of storage on your Mac Studio. And that is an insane amount of storage, an insane amount of just power to have inside of a Mac Studio. So I will say, since this specific Mac's release, we've seen some changes in their whole entire lineup. We've gotten new MacBook Airs, we've gotten the new MacBook Pro, but we also got the new Pro or MacBook Pro as well with the 14 inch and 16 inch getting upgrades. Now, the Mac Studio, from what I can see, is still a more powerful Mac overall than the M2 Pro MacBook Pros. So until Apple makes like an M2 Pro and M2 Ultra Mac Studio, for the most part, the Mac Studio is still going to be an overall more powerful machine than something like the MacBook Pro. But not everything is perfect with the Mac Studio. Now, if you have unlimited money, then clearly go for the Mac Studio and pick up an M2 Pro MacBook Pro while you're at it too. But if you're on a budget or if you're trying to be a little bit more conscious, well, the thing to keep in mind with the Mac Studio, unlike getting something like an iMac or even a MacBook Pro, is that you still have to buy a lot more things if you're buying a Mac Studio. So for one, you still have to buy your keyboard and your mouse separately. They don't plug in, it's not plug and play. It's not like you, unless you have them laying around, then that's perfectly fine. But if you don't, you will have to basically pick them up and buy them separately. On top of that, with something like the monitor, you don't have the monitor that's being sold with this thing either. With the MacBook Pro, you know, even though it's technically a portable laptop, it's still a separate machine with, you know, with the, with the display, which is really nice. With the Mac Studio, you do have to spend that extra money to go ahead and get some sort of monitor. So that's kind of another thing to keep in mind here too. On top of that, with the Mac Studio, you know, it's more expensive than the baseline, you know, MacBook Pro, but it's about the same price as an M2 Pro MacBook Pro. So again, it kind of just comes up to you. I do think for probably 95 or to 99% of people watching this video, you don't need the Mac Studio. You don't need all that power. It doesn't make any sense to you know buy this thing unless you are maxing out your current setup. If you have something like an Intel MacBook, you can, or an Intel Mac at all, going up to an M1 Pro MacBook Pro, the last generation MacBook Pro, you can probably buy them for around $1,500 on Amazon. That is a very good deal. It's a portable machine, and you are getting a very solid performing chipset from that specific device. But if you are in the market and you do want to go ahead and you know save some money, that is probably the way I'd recommend going. Even if you just plan on using a desktop machine all the time, you can just buy that M1 Pro MacBook, have it docked up, and just use it like it is. You still get an SD card in that thing, but you can always dongle it up, and it almost has the same type of you know experience as something like the Mac Studio. The Mac Studio, I think, is for people who are like editing a bunch of things, who are just programming things all day long, and their current machine, you know, even if you have an M1 machine, it's just bottleneck, like it's just not performing at, as it should. And then I think those people should be getting Mac Studios. Other than that, though, I don't really see a reason why the average person should be buying something like a Mac Studio at all. I think it's over kill and a majority of people should be buying something like the m1 pro macbook pro or an m2 macbook air or something along those lines that way they still have a portable machine they can use and they still have a machine that they can you know kind of keep it docked up at their desktop and still use it with like monitors and whatnot so that is kind of how the Mac Studio, I think, holds up so far in 2023. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.